uh, uh, this is Rowan and, uh, or, uh, Rowan Dewey, uh, for, my name is Rowan, also in Welsh, um, but yeah, uh, my name's Rowan, and, uh, I'm just making a quick little clippy do before I head out for game night tonight, um, Ennui Blue, uh, they sent me a massive package, uh, you might have seen it on my Instagram, um, updates, whatever thing we call it in the, this year, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I went to go pick it up on Tuesday, uh, I would've gone to get it on Monday, but I think a flusby blew out at the post office, so like, the lobby entrance where all of the, uh, P.O. boxes are at, that was dark, that was dark, but I didn't walk far enough to see that the, uh, that the service counter, which is, you know, through a, through a door just past the P.O. boxes, those lights were on, so my guess is like a fuse blew, um, the federal building, which is like, uh, it's technically the same building as my downtown Ann Arbor post office that, you know, my mail is at, um, but yeah, that was apparently, like, out of lights that whole day and into Tuesday as well. Uh, but Tuesday, as I was walking and I saw the, uh, the lights out in the lobby, I also saw this, uh, this woman, um, doing something at one of the counters, like, probably just, like, filling out a customs form or something. So the fact that she was there and, like, just barely within the light of the clerk, um, counter, that let me know that, yes, it was open that day, and it was probably open on Monday as well. So, uh, but yeah, Tuesday I went, and I went with my small shopping cart, which is where... Hi, cats, thank you. Those needed to be knocked over. They just knocked over a couple of board games. I, yeah, that was for now. Um, so yeah, I would've gone pick it up on, uh, Tuesday, uh, but I brought my small shopping cart with me, the one that I just usually put in, like, if I'm doing a small grocery run and my, I'm not expecting my back to be able to handle the load, I'll bring the small shopping cart. If I expect, if I'm going out to do a large grocery run or, um, going out to the thrift shops or whatever where I don't know exactly what I'm going to come home with, but it might be something a little bit on the bigger side, I will bring my large shopping cart. I was told that this would be full of, like, little crafty bits and bobs, so I thought this would be a small shopping cart situation. It was not. So I had to go back yesterday, that would be Wednesday the 6th, I believe, and bring back the big shopping cart, um, yesterday, so... That is that is what has caused the delay here, and um, I'm gonna pick up what we're now knocked over. I mean, I don't know. Uh, only the one of them is in danger of having game bits spilling out. But then again, that's in the way of the door. Uh, here is the massive package that I posted onto Instagram. As we see, this is huge. I was not expecting something this big. I was <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, I gotta go out to game night. But I gotta pick up something at the uh, Amazon locker at um, EMU campus uh, because. That's the one closest to where I live, and the order which I placed on, like, I get promotional gift cards through, like, uh, MD Mobile and a couple of other apps. I should link those in the description box below, and probably a pinned comment. If I forget to, please somebody tell me to, you know, go back and do that, because I, I, I need some help sometimes. Uh, but what was I saying? Right, um, so yeah, like, Amazon told me that if I had it sent to the one by me, it would be guaranteed next day. Which, of course, going by the time of the day that I made the order, on Monday night, it showed up yesterday. But, um... I missed the last bus that would have definitely gotten me there on time, and plus, like, when I finally got a bus that would get me to EMU, in theory, before they closed, and in theory, with just barely enough time for me to, like, be the Kroger shopper sort of thing, uh, I talked about that in another video. If I forget to link it below, please tell me, especially if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I was in danger of being, you know, that one jackass who, you know, shows up at, like, literally two minutes to closing. But that would have only proven true if the, uh, if my, um bus and directions app, which uses Google Maps for their maps. So, yeah, I, I think it's Move It. Yeah, Move It is what I'm using right now, because the, the Move It app that I use for directions and stuff, it gave me this really... It gave me this di these directions that did not match the directions it gave me last time I went there, which was back in August or something. So it's been... Oh, or was that July? Like, August or July, I went out that way. I went out to the, um, to the uh, EMU one rather than the one at Whole Foods, which I usually go to. So, yeah, because, like, it gave me these off directions, and since I was hauling in this, like, huge-ass package as well, I was like, I didn't make it in time. I, I knew it was going to be, like, you know, very unlikely I would have made it in time, but when I realized that it was giving me these directions that were just so off from the previous directions it gave me back in July or August, that's when I realized, you know, I, I, I give up, I give up. And at some point, I just kept going in approximately the direction it was telling me to, just to see where, like, where it was talking about, like, when I got there, like, nothing looked familiar, and I mean, it was too dark anyway. But yeah, I gotta get going, and I will unbox this enormous package that I got in the mail from a uh, young lady in Illinois, Ennui Blue, I will put. Yeah, um, take care. I will be back much later this evening, after game night. Borada, I'm back home from game night, and I have a shawl on because it's a little chilly, and... I made this one, and it's got these, uh, this lace edging at a couple of higher tiers and also at the bottom, and I'm thinking I might want to sell it because working on another one that I definitely want to keep, uh, so I don't know, um, I'll think of a fair price to make for it, but yes, there's an enormous package, and it's, it's just, it's too big to put on my lap, so I've got my X-Acto blade, and I'm going to 
shoe caps away just so that I don't accidentally cut anybody with the with the knife. And I point the knife in the exact wrong direction that the little uh, bubble card always says to, you know, but it's always like, face it away from yourself, and I'm like, ah, if I, if I'm careful about facing it toward myself, then that's okay. Oh, yay, more bubble wrap! Oh dear, there's a lot of things in here. So, um, it seems we've got things packed in t-shirts, and this is kind of cute. Ideal by next level, it's a 3XL, that's, that is a bit big for me, but it's got a cute little riverboat on it. Um, okay, oh, this looks like a, um, a lady style cut for it. Oh. This is a big, this is a big hoodie. Uh, the ultimate truth, take the narrow gate, enter the, um, 5T4RZ, uh, so stars in lead YouTube. Okay, I'm not sure what this YouTube channel is about, but I think I'll go check it out. And this is a 2XL, um, 50-52. Okay, I, I, I am definitely, like, too big for my height as far as weight goes, but, so, here's how I, um, and here is, like, chest measurements. So, this is, this is quite big. I usually wear a men's medium, though, um, in a lot of things I can get away with, a uh, men's small, as in, like, grown-ass men's small. Um, in ladies, I tend toward fitting a medium or a large, because, yeah, I mean, I am, like, ugh, um, just, like, at the border between class 1 and class 2 obesity, uh, but, you know, that's, a, that, mm, that alone might be a little misleading, because, like I said, I'm only 4'11", I'm only 4'11", so, um, by BMI, which is how that obesity ranking I just referenced, so, like, I'm just slightly over the border from class one into class two, so it's like, I think I'm like five, maybe seven pounds heavy enough to be, like, class two obese, so I would like to drop another stone by the end of the year, but, um, I'm not gonna beat myself up too much if I manage not to. I've dropped two stone this year, which is, honestly, like, while I believe my initial goal for the year was to drop four stone, two stone is more than I thought I could accomplish it. And maintain, okay? So, oh, we've got a, uh, ah, is this a coyote or a wolf? Oh, it says 9.5 inch sitting BB wolf. I don't know what a BB wolf is, but oh, he's cute. He's cute. He is cute. But yeah, uh, so yeah, as far as like my sizes go, like it's probably going to, st I'm sure there are some people who don't believe that I wear the smaller sizes that I do, but like I said, we've got to account for the fact that I'm four foot eleven. So, like, yeah, I'm I'm heavier than I should be by all accounts. Like, not just BMI. Like, um, I am probably at my healthiest a good fifty pounds lighter, um, possibly more. Like I said, my my end goal weight is about one hundred twenty three thereabouts, one twenty one twenty five. I just figured I'd shoot for like in between there. Um, but yeah, like. 130, 135, that's fine, uh, but yeah, like, I'm 4 foot 11, so, like I said, like, a, usually a men's medium, though a lot of times I, I can fit into a men's small t-shirt, uh, that grooving and green t-shirt that I got from the band, uh, that's a, uh, yeah, that's a small, that's a small. I'd initially placed an order for a medium, but they were out of mediums, and so he threw in a little bit of extra swag after getting in contact with me, and I said, you know, a small should work if that's what you've got, and it does work. It's a tiny bit more snug than I usually like, but I've got other t-shirts that are in a small, like, like that, uh, that, the Bedroom Witch t-shirt that I've got, that's a small. That fits perfectly um, in whatever brand she uses for those t-shirts. But yeah, the Grooving and Green one, that one, it definitely, it's a small that runs a little small. Either that or the Bedroom Witch's t-shirts, smalls run a little big. But yeah, I wear a men's medium about half the time. I can, you know, make a small work as well. Um, a ladies medium or, you know, just regular large. Hey, so what else is in here? We have a thing wrapped in bubble wrap. Oh my gosh. Oh, and there's metal on one end. So, taking off the rubber bands. Ah! Things falling. <laughs> okay, so this... Who? NYE Tool and match, uh, Machine Works. Chicago. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I... Ah! Oh, tube cutter. Okay. Okay, this is not quite what I had initially thought, but I like this. I like this. I'm not sure 
what all I can or will do with it, but I like this. Set up my little Mr. Midnight doll that my friend Danny made for me. And plus this little, this little cute guy. I've got it. I don't know. I'm just, I'm definitely hoarding like black cat tchotchkes and all of that. Oh my gosh. Oh, we've got more machine parts. Oh. <gasps> oh. This is clockworks. Oh. Oh shit, shit. And I can adjust. I can adjust the, uh. I can adjust the speeds. I can adjust the speeds. <gasps> what would I do with this? I'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. I don't know what. I'll figure out when I get into the editing portion if you can hear the ticking. And of course the cats are gonna be obnoxious behind the camera. <gasps> this is another piece of clockworks. <gasps> it, oh, it doesn't have a key on it, but. I can find a key to put on it. Oh my. Oh, oh, there we go. Do we have things? No, no. Spring is... Okay. Okay, a key would go on there. Possibly one on here. I'll figure shit out. I will figure shit out. And another t-shirt. So let's see. Old North St. Louis, something's happening here. And this is a 2XL by Next Level Apparel. And that's got a cute little print on the front of it. Oh, this has cats on it. Pancho and Lefty. Who are these cats? I don't know, but hey, this is a medium. Uh, this will probably fit. Oh, yeah. But yeah, uh, okay, yeah, I should look this up, because... Ah! No kitty! Which kitty? Stay. Protect Mr. Midnight, good to which kitty. <laughs> I wish someone was protecting Mr. Midnight. He was such a sweet boy. He was. Uh, if you go far enough back in my Instagram... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Murnau was trying to leap onto my lap, but he missed, and so he had to leap up again. But yeah, if you go far back enough onto my Instagram, you'd see uh, Mr. Midnight gave hugs. That cat was a hug and fool. Like, you see dogs who give hugs quite a lot. Oh, you're pointy. You're pointy, hun. Like, it's not uncommon to see dogs who will give hugs, but Mr. Midnight gave hugs, and he was a kitty, and he was so cute. And, like, even the little, like, condolences card that they sent me from the vet after his kidneys gave out on him, like, a couple of the vet texts, like added, you know, like, we all miss his hugs, because he was a sweet hugging boy. Like, you don't give hugs, do you? No, because you're not Mr. Midnight, and you'll never be Mr. Midnight. But that's okay, because you're cute. <laughs> oh, oh, nope, nope, nope. Box is this way. Oh, okay. Well, it's not empty yet, so... Ah! More kitties falling! Okay, so we got a tube. Hey! We've got things in, within the tube. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Ah, okay, that looks like that's about it. So, oh, it's a Dune poster. Oh, it's for the Lynch film. I actually really like the Lynch film. I've got a paperback of the book. Is it? Um, okay, I thought it was on this shelf, but mm, I, apparently I was wrong. Um, it is somewhere, pretty sure it's somewhere in this apartment. Oh, or did I, did I re-donate it? I don't know. But I really actually enjoy um, the Lynch version of Dune, and I know a lot of fans of the novel really don't like that. And a lot of people in general really don't like Lynch's Dune. But, like my best ex, which he also really likes uh, Lynch's Dune, and he also really loves the book. Um, he also really, really loves the book. But he admits that, yes, it's not exactly true to the novel in many ways. And, you know, with a lot of um, novel-to-film adaptations, you know, things have to change because, like, what works in literature doesn't necessarily work in film. And, uh, oh, crap. There's that, uh, that Edward Norton movie that's coming out, uh, Motherless Brooklyn, I believe is what it's called, and it's based on a novel, and the novel was written in the 1990s and set in what was then the present day, so the mid to late 1990s. <coughs> Excuse me. And, but he says, uh, um, Norton was saying on the, uh, on the Daily Show a couple days ago that the, um, that reading the book, it had this very, uh, 1940s, 50s film noir kind of feel, like this, uh, like, like it felt like, you know, like, like an old episode of, like, Peter Gunn or something, or the old, uh, detective pulps from the 1940s and 50s. So, he thought, you know, in order to capture that feel for the, for a film version of the story, 
to um, adjust the setting of the story so that it takes place not in the 1990s, but in the 1950s, approximately. And so, yeah, so that's, like, so, so sometimes, like, you gotta just, like, adapt things um, in ways, you know, to capture feel. Sometimes you have to sacrifice um, certain elements of the plot or setting in order to properly capture a good feel of the story that was conveyed in the novel, but if you were going to do the novel, uh, if you were going to do a film version of the novel, like, exactly as the novel describes, like, it wouldn't have that same feel in a film. And so, Scott, that would be my best ex, he and I both think, because it's, oh, gosh, I haven't finished the novel ever once before. I think I started it once, maybe very late in high school, maybe, oh, yeah, I, it would have been, like, shortly after I started dating Scott, so I was, like, 19, like, not in high school anymore, but yeah, like, 19, I was dating Scott, and I kind of started it, but it, it was one of those things that I like started and then put down because and just never really came back to because at the time anyway I found it really hard to get into but um, uh, Scott is a firm advocate for Lynch's Dune because in his opinion which I think is fairly qualified it captures this uh, the Lynch film captures what he calls this space opera kind of feel so it it goes for these melodramatic moments these like these big like grand um, these, these grand gestures of plot and setting and characterization that you couldn't, ri that were in the book, but if you're going to put the book exactly as it is, like if you're going to put the story of the book exactly as it is into a film, it wouldn't really capture that part of it. And so he doesn't really like the Sci-Fi Channel's miniseries of Dune, like he appreciates what they were doing with it, but he feels that because of all the hate that Lynch's Dune has, around it that like so many people hate it that they that he thinks that the uh, the sci-fi channel people who did the little miniseries um film of dune he thinks that they just like went overboard in trying to make their version as unlike lynch's as possible which i which ends up feeling like so boring it's so dry and dull and it, it just plods along and it just whereas like lynch's dune i I really think I really think he hit on something really good with that that I think is very underappreciated like and I think I think it's going to be at least another like 15 years or so before people really really appreciate Lynch's Dune for what it is that it it did weird things but it did weird things with that like unlike how Lynch does like left to his own devices what he did with the with the Dune movie was with purpose and it was very low on the BS, right? So, oh, here we have a mug. Tornado Alley. Oh, Oklahoma. It's an Oklahoma um, souvenir mug sort of thing. Um, not dishwasher safe, not microwave safe. Made in China. Yay. Ah. <laughs> That's adorable. I've been to Oklahoma. Yeah, only the once. Huh, weird. I thought I was there twice for a minute there, but oh. Mm. Oh, I'm okay. I've got I've got some friends. Um, combination of from there and still there, and um, so I've just probably like absorbed enough of their stories about living there that I was just like, wait, was I there twice? No, I was only there once. Uh, Oklahoma City, and like many people, many weirdos about my age, many of the nerd geek dork freaks about my age, one of my favorite underappreciated movies is uh. Uh, UHF, the one starring Weird, Weird Al Yankovic, and um, and that was filmed uh, mostly in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I believe. And yeah, I know it's got Genie Watanabe and um, uh, my my brother-in-law. Um, he was Chinese, like he, he was from Hong Kong, and so <laughs> uh, yeah, he was not. A huge fan of Getty Watanabe's character in Sixteen Candles because Long Duck Dong was Chinese, albeit, uh, of course, Getty Watanabe was is Japanese American. But um, yeah, Chan <laughs> uh, Chan was the exchange student at my sister's high school, so he was an exchange student from Hong Kong, going to um, high school in Toledo, Ohio, for um, you know like both semesters, and that's how they met. And you know, she went to um, Hong Kong to meet his family and to visit and uh, after the school year and they got married and they moved to London, England where he finished up school there because it's actually fairly common when exchange students from other countries come to the US they end up behind 
a year when they go back to their home country. A lot of people in America don't realize that. But yeah, he, uh, while he was, you know, a senior in high school along with, with my sister, when he got back to, because um, Hong Kong was still British at the time. So yeah, when he got back to Hong Kong, he was still behind a year, but he was able to transfer and finish up on an equivalency, basically, an equivalency um, in London. He was able to do that there. Hi. Hi. You're very pointy right now. Yes, you are. You're very stabby. And I'm not going to clip your nails on camera, because if I do, you're going to make noises and people are going to think I'm murdering kitties. He's not a fan of getting his nails clipped, but Nigel is even more not a fan of getting his nails clipped. And plus, Nigel is twice the size of Murnau, so Nigel has given me some minor injuries trying to clip his nails. That's why Nigel goes to a groomer for his nail clipping. But his groomer is on medical leave, and we're not sure when she's getting back, but... Um, you know, it's been a bit. I think I might be able to call Petco and inquire about that. Because, hello! Hi! You're annoying! Yes, you are! Thank you, so cute! Oh, oh, this is a little thing! This is a little, this is a little stabby guy! Oh, we've got a, uh, oh, is this, is this how he's supposed to be? I don't know. Is he, you've got a, you've got a little Father Christmas guy with a lamb. You've got a little Father Christmas with a lamb. Oh, yes! Knock over the t-shirts, Murnau! That's how you do it. This is cute. This is cute, and it's nice and kitschy. No, I don't know. I'm thinking he looks more... I don't know. Kind of looks a little bit more like an Odin, maybe, but I don't know. Like, uh, there's some, there's some, um, um, hy um, sturdy enough hypotheses about, like, the, uh, the various, like, um, mythologies and all of that that contributed to, uh, the American Santa Claus, and, uh, a lot of people, uh, see Odin as a, uh, as a minor contender for the, uh, origin, you know, like, just, you know, like, for contributing some origin. Okay, this, this is what I saw that I thought, oh my gosh. <gasps> this is beautiful. What is this? It's a thing. It's a thing with things. That's, that's, like, accurate. No matter what it is. <laughs> right? That's an accurate way to describe it, no matter what it is. Oh my gosh. <gasps> wait, wait. Does this, does this want some kind of mechanical bird to go in it? Oh, wait, wait. Is that what's in the bubble wrap? Oh my gosh. Wait, wait. Do I? Huh. How does this work? Okay. I'll figure this out. I'll figure this out without breaking anything, hopefully. Oh, wait, wait. Ah, there we go. There we go. Oh, my gosh. Okay, okay. So this is some kind of decorative birdcage of sorts. Ah, kitty! Why? Why, kitty? Okay, that was some of Murnau's handiwork. He flopped over on the charger cord for the phone, and... Ah, <laughs> oh, kitties. Kitties, kitties. What's in here? What's in here? Oh, oh, this is cute. Oh, that's cute! That's cute! Some little corvid-looking bird with on a sigil of sorts. Oh my gosh, this is cute. This is cute. I'm definitely gonna put this up. Um, oh my gosh. <gasps> Do I wanna put it up with Mr. Midnight? Mr. Midnight's on the wall now in his little... Uh, I got it on Etsy. It was being sold as a tarot bag, uh, but the cat printed on it looks so much like Mr. Midnight did, and it's so cute, and of course, so I had to, right? And, uh... But yeah, I can I can put little Corbett up there with Mr. Midnight, and he'll be Mr. Midnight's little protector. Because Mr. Midnight was not a very smart boy. Oh my gosh. Oh, I definitely want to decorate with this. Oh, I'll do all sorts of adorable things with this. Oh, more things in the box. Oh, these are all the bits and bobs and stuff that I was definitely told about. Oh my gosh. So yeah, when I saw that this was like a huge package, like I was told like, okay, some like locks and keys and stuff. So I was expecting a box about half the size, right? But yeah, you just went to town and packed up all the things and I am very grateful. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, that does have a clapper. Yay. Oh my gosh. I've actually been looking for some, uh, some decent chime bells. Um, like there are some cute ones at, uh, Crazy Wisdom periodically, but, um, they don't really have a good ring to them. Oh, <gasps> I know what this is. I know what this is. Famous St. Louis uh, quality shoes. But, hi! It's, um, it's a button holder. It's a button holder. You, um, you, you put the, you, you put the button, you put the hook through the buttonhole, and you pull the button up through it. So, um, um, with, uh, with boots, with, uh, um, and, you know, like, old ladies' boots, like, in the Victorian and Edwardian, they would have, a lot of times, um, buttons on them instead of laces. So, if, they, um, and a lot of times the button pull, like, um, especially if you had, like, any sort of, um, dexterity issues, like, I've got, I've got a carpal tunnel with, uh, neuropathy, um, that came along with it, um, in my hands, uh, in both hands, but especially my right hand, 
which, you know, like, kind of makes me glad I'm ambidextrous, but at the same time, it kind of makes me wish that I'd gotten more, like, I I'd learned to do more things with my left hand. Oh my gosh, cats, seriously! Oh. I would take the cord out of the phone, but it... I got home from game night, and it had, like, 14% charge, and it had, like, barely 20 when I started filming, but I was like, okay, I gotta fold up the, the, um, the big shopping cart, and, you know, stuff, so, um, so, yeah, like, um, if you had any dexterity issues, or the buttholes were just a little bit too small for even a healthy person to, um, work themselves, um, without an additional tool, you know, or maybe the buttonholes were just, you know, and buttons were just, like, you know, very small, or the buttons were very tight into the hole, so, yeah, this is, like, I'm sure there's another name, um, uh, for that, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a button holder. It's a button hole tool. I love these things. I've wanted to have one, even just for decorating. Oh my gosh, cats, really? Uh. All right, cats are trying to drive me nuts right now. What the hell? Well, at least, at least Nigel's over his head cold. Like, that was, it was just kind of hilarious how dramatic he was being for a few days there. It was just adorable. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I love these. I don't know why I love them. It's probably just for the fact that it's just such a very specific tool, right? Okay, so we've got a little, um, we've got a little, um, hook eye for walls and ceilings. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what all this is intended for, but I'm sure I can indeed find a use for it. Hi! Murnau is in the box. Let's see how long this lasts before he destroys the universe some more. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not sure exactly what this is intended for, but I'm sure I'll eventually figure out some kind of use for it. So, yeah, I'm seeing a few things in here that are probably going to sit in the toolbox just because it's easier. <gasps> Another bell. This one's brass. This has a really nice ring to it. Oh, made in Sweden. Oh, gosh. Ah, the print in there. So the print in here is making me think um, mid-20th century. Is that just going to be, like, way too bright to be legible? Probably. So the print in here, uh, especially the shade of blue, is making me think mid-20th century, maybe early mid-20th. So like 40s at the oldest. Uh, if I'm correct, this is, you know, this has been um, kept in really nice condition, probably barely used. Okay, we've got more of these little eye hole things. And I could probably stick this around back in here. Oh my gosh. <gasps> I forget the name. I forget the name. But I know, I know what this is all about. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. Oh gosh, oh gosh. I forget the name. I forget the name. I forget the, I forget what it's called. I forget what it's called, but... I recognize this, I recognize this, I've been, ah, uh, brain fart, brain fart overcoming me, oh my gosh, uh, I love antique tools, please don't ask me to explain things, I, like, almost as much as I love antique appliances, <laughs> like, I ha I definitely had my things when, uh, oh, we've got a nice little pulley with a thing, oh my gosh, lots of nice little bits, oh, oh, this is a, this is a key of some variety, uh, yeah, it's one of those, um, is a key. Um, sort of like one that you'd put into a grandfather clock, but not necessarily one for that. Oh, and the side of the bag busted it seems. Anything else really good? Oh my gosh, tiny bell, tiny bell. And I was just looking at the jingle bells the other day and explaining that I really like, <laughs> I don't know why I like bells. I do, I like bells. I like bells almost enough that I, wonder why I didn't go into percussion when I was l learning my musics, but I, I just, I love bells. I love dingy bells. I love dingy bells. And I love my cat. Oh, that's a very shiny pulley. And I love my cats even when they're annoying me. <gasps> this is, oh my gosh, this looks, oh, we've got a face with a nose, right? There's a face with a nose. Get it. Pat, pay attention to me. No, wait, don't pay attention to me. You'll get... We'll start doing weird things really fast. Okay. Ooh, here's the locks and keys and stuff I was told about. Oh my god. <gasps> We've got like little like um little uh, plates to put over the um like the like the bits for um um the old skeleton keys. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That's adorable. Oh my. Gosh. Some of these are just beautiful. I'm not gonna open this one up right now, but this is just gorgeous. This is gorgeous. And some of the, oh my gosh, <gasps> look at that one, oh look, look at that one, oh some of these are just beautiful, some of these are just beautiful, oh my gosh, oh look at that, look at that, oh <gasps> you know what, I think, I think this one, I think I've got something that this kind of thing would fit into, 
Okay. So yeah, with all of my various antique bobs and bits, I'm... Like, as a... Because something like this, it's clearly designed for, you know, just some kind of little, um, you know, box or furniture, like a, like a trinket box or furniture or something. So if I, if that doesn't, if that would indeed work for the thing I'm thinking of, and of course brain farts just like make everything escape me all of a sudden. But yeah, if that would indeed work with that, that would be amazing. Oh, we've got a bunch of these little, these little keys. Oh my gosh, I love them. Okay, and we put that over, oh, and one last thing with things. Oh, more, more, uh, more hardware findings. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is gorgeous. I've suddenly got like four ideas of things to make, doing things with. Oh my gosh. Uh, so many bits. And, oh, we've got another poster for a uh, uh, Requiem of the Crazies. Uh, I'm not familiar with this. Um, the way that it folds, was this from a graphic novel? I will probably look it up before I, um, before I finish, uh, before I upload this, but, um, but yeah, I will, oh, and we've got a patch with the same, um, sigil on my little Corvid thing. Okay, this is definitely a thing for me to look up now. It, oh, we have a shoulder bag. Oh, yeah, that is leather. That is leather. That is... That is really nice. Not sure what I would do with this. At the very least, I can, I might adorn it, but it's really nice and it is real leather. Please don't ask me why I like to smell leather. It, it's arguably inappropriate, so just like, <gasps> and we've got a tote bag. We've got a tote bag with the St. Louis original, like on the t-shirt. The standard American speaker and entertainer, beautifully illustrated by celebrated artists. And we've got a metal bookmark. Oh my, oh, this is, this is old. This is so, oh my gosh, this has a letter. Before sealing this envelope, before sealing this envelope, and it is sealed, so, and it's empty. It is sealed and empty. That's interesting. But, oh my gosh, we've got somebody's letter in here, handwritten. When we hear the music ringing in the bright celestial dome, when sweet angels' voices singing, gladly bid us welcome home to the land of ancient story where the spirit knows no care. In the land of life and glory shall we know each other there. That sounds familiar. We've got four verses. This is going to drive me nuts until I'm done filming and have a moment to look this up and then completely forget to insert a uh, explanation to uh, speaker and entertainer, recitations, readings, plays, drills, tableau, etc., etc. It does say etc., etc. Oh my gosh, this is... Oh, ooh. <laughs> going to get some use out of my parchment tape, I see. What year is this? Please, please give us a year. Really? Um, were you popping bubble wrap? Oh, he was messing with the zipper bags because there's metal in them. Okay, when was this published? Because the front cover... Ooh, the front cover suggests Edwardian. Um, I'm going from what I can make out of the, uh, of the you know, ghosting image here. So yeah, the front cover suggests Edwardian um, printing. Wait. Oh, yeah, this is just a... Oh, this is just a metal bookmark with a little... Um, crucifix on it, and I will put it right back there. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Maybe, uh, maybe mid-19th century, mid to late 19th century, just going by her, uh, her dress here. Yeah, I'd say mid-19th to, uh, to early Edwardian, just going by, um, by the printing here. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, what's, ooh, ooh, jobbies, jobbies. Okay, that's a bit big on my pinky. But, let's see. Eh. Oh, that's actually a really nice fit on my, uh, on my left ring finger. I don't have too many, um, rings that are in a more obviously, like, men's style, you know, which is usually a lot more square and a lot more chunky. Oh my gosh, that's, 
That's actually got a nice little, like, um, fluting around it. That, that's beautiful. That is, oh, shit. What is that? That's not a, that's not, that's not a bloodstone. It's, is this turquoise with, is this ruby zoicide? I don't know. I'm sure somebody at World of Rocks could tell me. That is just gorgeous. Is this, oh, wait, I'm seeing a stamp. This is sterling. We've got a maker's mark that says DLM. But then it's like, yeah, 0.925. So yeah, this is sterling silver. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. That goes <laughs> that far on there. Oh, there you go. It goes on this pinky with the um, with the compression glove on. <laughs> that is beautiful. Actually, I should move this bell or Murnau is going to knock it over in the next week. Oh, and we've got some... Oh, this is a little mirror with an... Photograph of quite androgynous person. My guess is, my guess based on the hair, uh, 1910s or 20s was when this photograph was taken. Um, probably early mid 20s. That's beautiful. And it's a little mirror. Hey, you want to see a goober? See, it's a goober. I call him a goober all day long. I'm sure he thinks that's his name. Oh, and we've got a typewriter button magnet. And we've got, ooh, that's. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my gosh. We've got a little uh, swallow on a chain. But I've got a few ideas already that of things I can do with that. I might end up taking the... No, oh, I'm definitely going to end up taking the chain off. Oh my gosh, what is... This is... Is this glass or a resin? This is cute, too. And... Oh, it's on... It's on a brooch. It's on a brooch, but it's also got a cord. My guess... If it's on a... Uh, I have to look. If it's got glue, my guess would be a resin, but if it's not glued, then maybe a glass. That is... That's pretty. Oh! 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 It's a little... It's a little... It's a little coffin pendant with a little skeleton dude inside. Oh my gosh, and it opens! It opens! It opens! Oh my gosh. It's got a little skeleton in it. Oh, you know, I have an idea for this that I've already loved so much. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think I know what's gonna be. I think I know what I'm gonna do with this guy. I definitely know what I'm gonna do with this guy. Wait, is this? Hold on a sec. For now, are you being silly? Always. He doesn't know any other way to be. But that's okay. I'm suspicious. Is this? Is this an alchemy? If it wasn't alchemy, it would have. It would have their mark on it somewhere. But there's the front, and there's the inside. This reminds me a lot of an old alchemy gothic design from the mid to late '90s, maybe early aughts. And of course the Ziploc bag fell, because this is my life today. Oh, oh, and we got, oh, is this a reaper? This is a reaper. Do we have a maker's mark on you? Oh, no, but, uh, okay, so it says death, so it's definitely from a Four Horsemen series um, of things, perhaps, ostensibly anyway. Um, I've seen a maker's mark, so, um, but yeah, a lot of people like the little Four Horsemen stuff. That's cute. Oh! The best therapist has fur and four legs, right? In my case, that would be Nigel. Like, Murnau, I love you, but you're not Nigel, and you'll never be Nigel, and what the hell just fell out of my hands again? Ugh. Okay, this is the last thing packed in bubble wrap, and I will figure this out. So, many bubbles wrapped all up. Why? I don't understand. How does this happen? If I get to the middle and it's just, like, more bubble wrap. Oh, nope. <laughs> hey! Please don't. He's after the metal bits. I don't know why Murnau likes metal bits. He's a weird cat who does weird things. I only have weird cats who do weird things. Uh, Phoebe's pretty close to being quote-unquote normal, but if you ask me, that's probably the weirdest thing about her. Ugh. It's gonna be, like, this big when I... <laughs> So much bubble wrap! Why? Oh! Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is... Oh, this looks like a copy of... Wait, no, is this... Is this based on the allegory of winter, or is it based on something else, and I sound really stupid thinking allegory of winter when I see this? This is... This is beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Got a bunch of little bits and things, and there's one last little bundle of stuffs. Please, for now, may I have it? May I have it? Kitty! <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we got uh, some record albums and also 
a bumper sticker that says, Hermits have no peer pressure. And this is from Azure Green. Ah, cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we've got uh, Johnny Cash. Gotta love Johnny Cash, right? Uh, uh, recorded live at the Grand Ole Opry House, um, Nashville, Tennessee, featuring the Tennessee Three and Bill Walker's orchestra and background voices of the Statler Brothers and the Carter family. Oh. Uh, we've got Andy Williams' greatest hits. Not... Oh! It's got Moon River. I, uh, I do like that one. That would be, uh, that's probably best known from its appearance in, um, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Uh, more Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash at San Quentin. Oh my gosh. Oh, and we have an advertising flat for, uh, U2's The Unforgettable Fire. Uh, Darren at the Copa. Wait, wait, wait. Darren, Darren. Bobby Darren! Yeah, that's who I was. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh, and this. Oh, I saw the back of this. Okay, so we got a rock and roll collection. Buddy Holly. And. Oh, I do love Buddy Holly. I really do. I really do. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And of course, the cats get a big giant box to jump in and out of, and Murnau gets bubble wrap to destroy, and metal things that he's going to try and hide from me until I find them months later, somewhere where they shouldn't be, because that's just what he does. Oh, some of the tape on the bubble wrap is stuck to him, so I'm going to go rescue Murnau from bubble wrap. And <laughs> Oh, he's so funny. He's such a goofy little boy. Yes, he is. But, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go clean up, and again, on we Blue, thank you so much! Oh my gosh, this was all such lovely, these are all such lovely bits, and, oh my gosh, I'm gonna figure out something to, uh, to do, and, with the clockwork bits, and, um, and I figure, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, so many bits, so many bits, but yeah, I need to go put this up, I need to go put this guy up, uh, with Mr. Midnight, because... He's, Mr. Midnight was my sweet boy. Well, I mean, Nigel's my sweet boy, but Mr. Midnight, he, he, was, he was a special little guy, and I don't just say that because he gave hugs, but I say that because uh, Mr. Midnight had some learning difficulties. <laughs> he was perplexed by the treat ball, and I, I don't understand. He just, like, I even gave him one that had a much lighter weight to it, um, had holes going all around it, rather than the ones that I give to these three now, which only has one hole, and it has a bit of a heavier weight to it. So, like, I gave him, like, the cat treat ball for, uh, for, for cats with learning difficulties, right? You know, I gave him, like, the treat, I gave him the starter treat ball, right? I, I gave, even gave him that one, and he was still perplexed by this. Like, he would watch the other two work their treat balls and get treats out of it, and he would look at them in awe like they are working some grand wizardry, and he would just be there, like, licking the holes at, on his treat ball, like, hoping to coax a treat out of it, but he wouldn't, it wouldn't work, and he'd just, and I'd feel sorry for him at some point, like Allie Broche, uh, Hyperbole and a Half, and her special dog, who, uh, who, who she thinks has a learning difficulties, um, because the, the dog could not figure out how to knock over the paper cup to get the treat out from under it. So yeah, like, like Allie and her special dog, I, I, at some point, I just, like, felt sorry for Mr. Midnight and opened up the treat ball and dumped out the treats for him to eat because he clearly was not figuring this out. Nigel figured out the treat ball on his own, you know, just, like, after studying it, you know, like, for a minute or two and, like, you know, trying different, you know, ways to hit it and nudge it to get the treats out of the hole. Okay. That's fine, that's fine. That's, you know, what an intelligent cat does is he figures things out on his own. Phoebe, also fairly smart. She's watching Nigel with his, and I put one down in front of her, and she does what Nigel does, you know, like monkey see, monkey do, right? Mr. Midnight, he's watching the other two work theirs, and he still can't figure his out. I give him one that is, in theory, much easier to work than the one I've given the other two, Nigel and Phoebe, and Mr. Midnight still couldn't figure it out. Murnau, Murnau can figure out the treat ball, it's just like half the time he just decides, eh, it's not worth the effort, I'll just, you know, like, zoom in and, like, eat up whatever, um, you know, like, if, uh, if, if Phoebe, like, knocks out too many and, like, one ends up a little bit further away from him. So, like, Murnau can work a treat ball, it's just like half the time he'd rather steal from the other two. Which is kind of funny in and of itself. Like, 
<laughs> but yeah, again, thank you so much. This is such, like, cute things and wonderful things, and I love the antique tools and all the little bells, and this ring is just, like, this is just such a gorgeous ring. Ah, oh, there's this, this, I think this is turquoise, but it's got something else in it, and this is definitely a natural stone. I can tell from the little pits in it. Um, oh my gosh, this is just beautiful. Yeah, I'm gonna go see at uh, World of Rocks what is in this one. But yeah, that is just, that's just, oh my gosh, so many, so many cute little bits and whatnot. And thank you again so much. I do love gifties. I do love gifties. And again, thank, thank you. Thank you again. Oh my God. This is just, I, I'm just overwhelmed. Like this was for, this was for legit, like no special reason. Uh, you, you know, you just said you had some extra bits lying around that you couldn't think of anything to do with. And we're wondering if I'd be, um, interested in, taking some bits, and I'd be like, sure, yeah, f fill up a box full of bits, and I'll figure out what, where to go from there, and again, thank you so much, thank you so much, uh, especially the Dune poster, I love that Dune poster, is it gonna go in the kitchen? Yeah, it's gonna go in the kitchen, ah, <gasps> yes, and, uh, yeah, as far as the, as far as the shirts that are just, like, gonna be way too big, um, let's see, I might, hmm, I'll, I'll look up the YouTube channel for the hoodie, and if this is, huh, my best ex would definitely be big enough for that. It might even be a little bit roomy on him, but I will, um, I don't know. I'll ask if, you know, I'll find the YouTube channel that it's, um, plugging, and I'll be like, hey, I got a, I got a hoodie from, from this channel. Um, would you like this? Here's their videos. Um, but yeah, if not, if not, I don't know. I could, uh, I could probably, I might, I don't know. I, I'll think of something. I'll think of something. Um, but yeah, the, uh, uh, the little wolf, the little wolf is so cute, but, um, he, he, he doesn't really go with a lot of the, uh, decor I've got, but I have a friend with a six-year-old, and the six-year-old just loves animals, so, of course, I've got, like, instant, like, gift for child, and, uh, and, and my, and my friend and her wife are just really great people, and the, the, the Jazzy's a really neat kid, so I'll just be like, here, child, take this. <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, again, like, thank you so much, thank you so much, and yeah, like, I, I admit I'm not, I'm probably not gonna use everything, um, and anything I can't think of a thing to do with, especially the t-shirt, <laughs> um, except for the one t-shirt, right? But, you know, we've got some, we got some, you know, t-shirts that are gonna be quite large for me, but that's okay, because either I can, um, donate them, or I could, you know, I don't know, like, make... <sighs> Like, make a, I don't know, like, pillow or cushion or, well, you know, basically like a pillow or a thin pillow. Um, or maybe a, hmm, I know, I think I've got instructions somewhere on how to turn a, a t-shirt into a tote bag. I don't know, I don't know. Lots of things I can do. Um, if I decide not to, always donate box. But yes, Wolfie, uh, I, I think I know of a great home for the little red wolf here, uh, because... But yeah, yeah, that's just great, that's just great. And I love the, and I love the little Father Christmas here with the little lamb, um... Or it says twins feather trees twenty out four on the bottom. I'm not sure what that's about, but you know, I, I just I like this little guy. I like this little guy. He, this little Father Christmas guy. He's great. He's great. I don't know why. I, I just love him. I just do. I just do. Just look at that face. Um, I don't know. <laughs> he almost looks a little bit angry. Like, <laughs> like, like he's just not having this day. But you know, he's he's he, he's got a story here. He's got a story. What it is? Anybody's guess. But right. Oh my gosh. But yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And to everybody else watching, uh, take care of yourselves, wear your sunscreen, and all of that. And as always, you can, um, you know, use the thumb icons to denote your enjoyment or lack thereof at all of this nonsense where I just went on way too long uh, <laughs> about complete nonsense. Uh, you can hit the subscribe button and maybe the bell notifications because... Um, and your phone will scream at you whenever I feel bothered to post a video in the future. And, um, tell all your friends, as always, if, you know, you can follow me on social medias, uh, it's all listed below, um, or if you can't be bothered to, like, read the description box, as, like, apparently nobody ever does, uh, it's, uh, run, uh, 1334, R-U-A-D-H-A-N, on, 1334, on both Twitter and the Instagram, and, um, Check out my music on Bandcamp. I've got a single out on a compilation from Mystic Fragments Records. Go check them out. And uh, after you've checked out the uh, the Mystic Fragments compilation, if you still have more dollars than cents, please feel free. I've got a uh, pay 
PayPal tip jar, uh, link in the description below, um, or just uh, paypal.me slash ruan, R-U-A-D-H-A-N. Uh, I've also got a Patreon, and this is basically, like, uh, at this point, it's just basically, like, subscribing to my music, but that's okay, because of things and stuff, right? So, bats and kisses, and take care of yourselves, and goodbye! Now, you, yes, you, are a kitty. Don't deny it! Get back here. For now, little fluffin, little goober boy, who's a goober knee noodle, named Murnau. You, yes, you are a kitty. Don't deny it! Goofball. Goofy little floofball.